Hello and welcome to Flutzes and Waxels, a figure skating podcast to satisfy all of your skating news, analysis, and recap needs. I'm Mary Margaret Mertzos. And I'm Alicia Mertzos, and we're sisters with a lifelong love for figure skating, practicing, watching, and discussing. So let's delve deep into our next season's best episode. Yes, obviously there's not a whole lot happening in the world of figure skating yeah. right now, so season best time. Things are quiet, and yeah. the reason is unfortunate, but also kind of a normal time for things to be quiet in the world of figure skating. True. It would feel more normal to be doing these were it not for the rest of the world, but we'll try and pretend. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do our best to pretend. We talked about everything else that is going on mm-hmm. in the last season's recap, ep- season's best recap episode. Listen to that if you want us to get into the whole thing. But we're going to try and talk as little about it every episode as we can. Exactly. So this next list is going to be the men. And this has continued to be interesting because we had about as much divergence in who yeah. we picked as with the ladies. We were similar at the top. Our and top then, half is basically the same. And then everybody else, we did not pick the same people, yep. which is exciting. We means we get lots of people to talk about. Or we pick the same people, but different programs yes. because them's the rules. Yes. Before we get into the rules, though, this episode is once again brought to you by our very first sponsor. Yep. So... Inskate. Inskate's an app with resources for skaters and those of us who'd like to train like skaters. And you've got all kinds of material on that app. Um, All kinds of videos on every skating element presented to you by top Russian skaters and coaches, including off-ice exercises, which can be great if you're at home because lots of off-ice exercises are body weight only. So you can do them at home without any equipment. Yeah, and there's lots of them. Tons of stuff for you to work on. You can also check out, they've been doing some stuff over on Instagram as well. Um, Check out the link in the description of this episode for the link to Inskate and get your three-day free trial. So the rules of our list, if you've listened to these, you know, but just in case this is anybody's first time. I'm sure that there are people listening for the first time to a season's best episode. You might have been here all season, but didn't listen to last season's. Exactly. So So we each write our own list, our own top 10. Individually, without consulting each other. Yes. And we are not allowed to repeat skaters. So if a skater has two programs you like, you can only pick one. Yes. And that is how we wind up with each of us individually picking a different program from the same skater. Yep. That happens once on this list. Yes. Um, So we each rank them from one to 10. Our top program gets 10 points from each of us. Our 10th. Uh, 10th ranked program gets one point from each of us. We aggregate them, list them out in terms of the number of total points between the two of us. Yep. And any tiebreakers just go alphabetically, yeah. just for fairness sake. They get the same numerical ranking, and we just we usually talk about them alphabetically unless there's something weird going on. Yes. And we have 16 programs yep. on this list. So same as the ladies list. There was a whole lot of division, again, until you get to the top our top is probably kind of predictable. Yep. But <laughs> but as per usual, we are starting at the bottom, yes. working our way up to our favorites. Yep. So our first set of programs is a tie. I had Daniel Grassel's short program as number 10 on my list. And I had Shun Sato's short program as my number 10. Yep. So Daniel Grassel, we've, we've talked a lot and... Again, if you have listened for a while, you know. But if not, I have a real serious soft spot for a Mozart program. <laughs> there are not enough. You would think they would be all over the place in figure skating, I but they're really that's not. The problem, yeah, is everybody thinks that Mozart is like a warhorse, mm-hmm. and so nobody skates to it. Except, first of all, even if Mozart was a warhorse, that is extremely <laughs> reductive. Yeah, he wrote a whole lot. <laughs> in case you didn't know, there's lots to choose from. <laughs> yeah. And also, everybody thinks, I guess it, I guess people think it's trite. Maybe, but except I think that this program is just a genius collaboration. Yep. So it is selections from Mozart's Requiem, and it's choreographed by Benoit Rochot. He always has such detailed choreography, and you can tell that daniel is like his muse in a way sometimes yeah. you work with skaters and you can't really tell it's benoit choreography but these two bring out the best yeah. in each other or benoit will choreograph benoit choreography and it, uh, yeah, doesn't, and it doesn't look right on yeah. certain skaters daniel grassel 
really suits Benoit's style and you can see it come together in particularly his short programs mm-hmm. where he's a little less focused on, on the jumps, the big <laughs> jump elements. Well, especially in, I would say the junior iterations yes. because you, you're not allowed to do a mm-hmm. quad. So he is doing jumps that he's really confident in and able to pay full attention to, especially the first piece of music in it. The yeah. Lacrimosa is again, really detailed and patient choreography. We're really taking our time with all yeah. the movements, which I'd love to see more of. Yeah, I would love to see what he could do next season, which I don't necessarily expect Mm -hmm. because next season's going to be tough. Yeah, for everybody. For everybody, but especially those making a firm jump, as I expect he will, from junior to senior and including bigger elements for the first time in the short program. I will be sad to see his junior short programs go because they really do show off the performer he could be. Yeah, I I just think, you know, musically, choreographically, and his presentation of them, again, especially when he's not trying the big, difficult yeah. jumps, and so you can just enjoy the skating. I, It was always one of my favorites yeah. throughout this season. On a very similar note, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed Shun Sato's short program when we saw it for the first time in Lake Placid. Yep. Again, this was one where... It ended up on this list primarily because I saw the potential in it mm-hmm. and the potential in him. There is there is a nuanced and detailed performer there. Oh yeah, for sure. It doesn't come out to the fullest extent, probably because of the immense pressure of being a junior Japanese man right yeah. now. Um, but he had really great moments, particularly in Lake Placid in that short program of showing just how nuanced he can be when it comes to the music well and i think for him as well it helps that he mostly competed as a junior when yeah. you can't do quads and exactly the quads were what sometimes gave him trouble in the free skates yep. but and we should mention as well he is skating to music from young girls of rosha for one of mary's favorite movies of all time yeah i was shocked it was on my <laughs> list and not hers it was it was really on the border for me i debated but yeah. Yeah, this is just a really fun program. And again, kudos for being one of very, very few skaters to to pick this music. Because I think it's a really fun choice. Yeah, it's a fun choice. And it shows off um, an adequate level of junior levity that we don't see at the senior level a ton. Mm -hmm. Especially from the men. Although I, I would love me a Young Girls of Rochefort free skate from literally anybody. Yeah. They... There's enough music that the whole thing is scored beautifully by Michelle Legrand. Like, somebody do it. Just Somebody, please. anybody. But not enough people take, not enough guys in particular, take the fun approach mm-hmm. or the light approach especially. We have some real fun programs yes. on here. <laughs> but they're over the top and fun mm-hmm. as opposed to a little bit lighter and airier, which is something Mm -hmm. we don't see a lot from the guys. And I really appreciated that because the style suits him well. Yeah. I think it it helps bring him out a little bit. He's not as natural a performer as some of the other guys on here. And I think the music really helps draw him out. Yeah. He's, He's a serious guy. You can tell that he is quite serious, but you can see, particularly in his face, there's a little bit more lightness during this short program. So I hope that they continue in this vein because Mm -hmm. it's pushing him and it's showing a lot of potential. Yep. Uh, And then above that, we had a tie for 13th. So I had Matteo Rizzo's Free Skate, number nine on my list. And I had Mikael Brugina's Free Skate, number nine on my list. Yep. So talking about fun fun programs. Yeah. (laughs) You can't get much more than a Beatles medley plus dad dancing for yeah. I mean, Regina. We talked about how much we loved his dad dancing so many times this season that it had to go on the list. <laughs> it couldn't not go on the list because he was one of a few guys who this season decided dad dancing is back. Yep. I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to force it into figure skating and we're all going to have a good time whether you want to or not. And that is the thing. I mean, we've seen, you know, a, our share of Beatles medley programs throughout the years, but I think you, you have to have fun with it. Yeah. If you're just playing it serious, especially in a free skate, it doesn't quite work for me. I think you need the silliness yeah. that he brings in. It needs to be a little goofy. Mm-hmm. Funny enough, Matteo Rizzo's Beatles medley program was yeah. one where we were like, but 
not quite. Yeah. You tried so hard, but not quite. Yeah, it was very good. It, I wouldn't put it over, you know, to fun level. No, it was the right direction for yeah. him. He was still figuring out where he was going, whereas Mikhail Brugina is old enough that yeah. he's like, nobody cares what I do anymore. <laughs> My coach doesn't care what music I pick. Because yeah. let's be honest, he doesn't. <laughs> let's do something I fun. I don't have a federation telling me what kind of yeah. music I need to skate to. <laughs> I can pick whatever I want. And if I want to dad dance in the middle of my program, I'm going to dad <laughs> dance. And I am here for it. It does kind of make me wonder, though, because obviously he, well, trains under the same coaches as Nathan Chen. I don't know mm-hmm. how much they skate together nowadays, but it does make me wonder which... Which came first? Dance break came first, yeah. Nathan's or Mikel's. I, I don't know. I have but... no idea, but... Whether it was a mind meld or somebody, one of them seeing the other one do it and going, that's a good idea. I should mm-hmm. do that. I'm I'm here for it. Yeah. More short dance breaks. Yeah. In your choreographic sequence. Exactly. That's the perfect spot for it. As long as they're short yeah. and in your choreographic sequence and not used as your breather. <laughs> yes, exactly. Then I want more dance breaks. Yep. Yeah. Um, and as I mentioned, Matteo Rizzo was my pick for number nine. And funnily enough, because... He has been going in the fun program mm. direction, at least in the free skate for the last couple of seasons. And this this year he switched it up with yeah. more of a fun short program and a really more serious free skate to Galicia Flamenca is the name of the program. And choreographed by Massimo Scali, who is on this list a surprising amount, frankly. I have been putting together the choreographers and the music for all of our lists for this season. Massimo Scali makes a lot of appearances period yeah he's been doing some real good work this yeah. season, and i think you can see the the flamenco influence mm-hmm. it's it's a real shame and i know exactly where he was going with this this would have been you know the first europeans in a while without javier fernandez yep he was on the european podium last year and thinking i'm gonna do a hobby tribute yep. do a flamenco and and take over hobby spot at the yep. top of the podium that was clearly the goal yeah didn't quite work out but i still think that this is a real star of a program yeah. it's a more mature look for him as he is you know growing up a little yeah. bit he in... he has found a style that works for him mm-hmm. he does the very serious spanish style programs very well mm-hmm. and he does the fun kind of goofy programs very well yep the area in between those, mm-hmm. not so much. Yeah. He's tried in between to figure out what works and it hasn't been as effective in the past, but this program is fantastic for him. Yeah. Just great detail. And again, I think just the maturity jump in between. And don't get me wrong. I really loved the you know, short his... program. Well, I was going to say even his free skates from the yeah. last couple of seasons, like the Bohemian Rhapsody mm-hmm. one, or even the, you know, the music cuts didn't work, but the Rolling Stones one, yep. it was fun in idea, if not execution. a successful execution. Yeah. But I think that it's just a more mature look and it makes you realize like, no, this is a serious competitor. Yeah. It's just a shame that the jumps didn't quite go as well. Yeah. This program has really taken him from fresh senior to really competitive senior Mm -hmm. and yeah the jumps didn't work out this is not about the jumps we did not do that full disclaimer at the beginning yes this has nothing to do with the jumps except for when it does (laughs) because every once in a while the jumps do have an impact on the Mm -hmm. perception of the program but this is about what programs would we give 10 in performance and choreography and interpretation yep all Um, of these are in the like nine plus category for us yeah exactly uh, let's move on to another tie yep. above them. So I had Daniel Samsonov's short program, number eight on my list. And I had Jason Brown's free skate, number eight on my list. And this is this is a weird pairing, I'll give you. Although it's I, a strange pairing. But I am happy with both these choices. Yeah. They're extremely different. They are vastly different, but they they both belong here. Mm-hmm. And if, why don't we start with Samsonov's program? Well, it, alphabetical. Do Jason. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sure. Um, so Jason Brown's Schindler's List free skate is... Schindler's List is a divisive music choice. Some yeah, people think honestly, you shouldn't skate to it. Honestly, that was the sole reason that I have no Schindler's List programs yeah. anywhere near my list. It was just, I don't know. 
too much discussion than whatnot for me, which is a shame because there were some well skated ones. Yeah. But it brings up lots of issues that I just don't want to touch right now. It does. But I think despite the fact that there was the larger Schindler's List discourse going on, Mm -hmm. Jason was kind of the one skater who was exempt from that. True. Yeah. And it is in large part due to how well he skates this program. Yeah. Well, and that he takes it seriously, as some people arguably maybe didn't. Yeah. (laughs) we are not talking about no. that today. We no. are just talking about Jason Brown, who I think just about everybody agrees did right did by this justice. music. Yeah, for sure. And the fact that, you know, he finally figured out how to integrate a quad without it ruining the program. <laughs> true. That helped is true. Mm-hmm. a lot um, because of this program. When you're skating to dour music, which Schindler's List obviously is, and... Your if, program falls yeah. apart from the first jumping pass. It, it just can feels just be like sad. Yeah, it just feels like a tragedy all yeah. around. <laughs> As opposed to this season, Jason figured out how to integrate the quad and tuck it into a corner, yep. kind of literally, and leave it behind. Yep. Regardless of what happened, and move on. And that really helped with the perception of this program for me because it is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's choreographed by David Wilson. And again, you can tell, and he's talked about in interviews, that Jason took this subject very seriously and wanted to wait until he was mature enough to skate to it, which Which is always the right choice. It's always the right choice. And because so many skaters start choosing their own music at like 12, very few skaters have the ability to recognize that in themselves. Mm -hmm. They will very often, you know oh, I want to skate to this music. And in retrospect, they might say I wasn't mature enough for that yet. But very You don't know at the time. Yeah, very few skaters know that they're not ready for a piece of music that they love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, again, this this was more the discourse that kept it off my list than anything else. But it's it's a great program. And I mean, honestly, Jason could skate to anything. And it's worth watching. Honestly... Jason is one of those skaters who you can probably expect to make it onto this list in some capacity every season. Yeah. Sometimes he's a number 10, but even our number 10s are programs we adore. We get some flack occasionally for people who get number 10 on our list. (laughs) But like I was saying before, that at worst is like a nine in performance for us or a nine in choreography. Yeah, if they're on this list, it's because we love the program. Yeah. And yeah, uh, for me, frankly, his short program was the one I was waffling on, where it was, if I was going to put one on, it was going to be a short program, and it just missed off, partly because I knew that you were putting on the free skate. Like, Jason will be on the list. It's fine. (laughs) There are so many other people, especially, and this is something that does impact our list a tiny bit, we want you guys to find new programs you might not have seen yet. Yeah, definitely. And so we we do make a concerted effort to make sure there are juniors on this list. Yeah, partly because there is great stuff in juniors, but also go watch juniors if you haven't. To be fair, less in the men maybe than other disciplines because sometimes the junior men can be rough. But you do get... There are some real real junior gems. I I think it's telling that the junior programs that are on here are almost all short programs. There's one exception. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But let's move on. Yes. Um... As we mentioned, tied with that is Daniel Samsonov's short program. He is another junior Russian skater. And yep. this one for me is all about the skater because mm-hmm. he is just a little genius of a skater who's coming into his own. And I can only hope and pray that the jumps and, you know, his health continues on so yep. we can continue to see him skate for a long, long time. Because as impressive as the jumps are... The skating is way better. The skating, the flexibility this kid has. Yeah. There are female skaters who stereotypically are much more flexible, who cannot hit the positions this kid can. And that's the thing, too. So this this is a Daniel Glykenkaus yeah. choreographed piece. It's to rein in your black eyes. And in a lot of ways, the choreography, you could imagine any of the women in yeah. that camp skating, skating to, to it. it. But funnily enough, I think he does 
maybe the most justice to this choreograph this choreography other than like a Kosternaya yeah. because he has the flexibility, he holds the positions, he is able to do all the difficult turns and just make it look smooth and easy. He and Kosternaya are very much in the same vein for me. Mm-hmm. They are skaters where they transcend the choreography. They transcend the choreography because you probably know we are not the biggest fan of Daniel Glickenkaus choreography. Mm-hmm. But there are certain skaters that can take it and with the quality of their movement and their attention to the music, manipulate the choreography just enough so that it's the same, Mm -hmm. but it looks better. Yeah, this is, and I guess this is kind of the question of your philosophy of choreographing, where he seems to start with, do this insanely difficult program, and we're going to hope that you can execute it well, which is maybe not the best idea since a lot of people can't execute it well yes. but then again you get somebody like Samsonov who can execute it perfectly and you say okay I I see what you're going for yeah. I still don't think it's maybe the best idea for everybody across the board but he makes it work yeah he does and I mean especially in the short program because again he's a junior he can't do his quads in yep. the short program he is able to pay so much attention to the music because the triples for him are nothing are nothing barring occasionally the triple axle goes a little bit awry yeah but that's relatively rare for him it's mostly when he tries to do 17 quads in the free skate that things go wrong Mm -hmm. and so we can really revel in how good a skater he is and kind of ignore the jumps which are good inconsistent but good yeah it again this is all about if you don't watch juniors and have never seen this guy, go watch oh, his short program. It is, again, revelatory. And he's a special kid. Yeah. If I he am can just. Worried. Yeah. He's also tiny, <laughs> he which is also makes me a little worried. So but... small. And I, it's one of those situations where I want to figure out how tall his parents are. <laughs> yes. And figure <laughs> if he is just genetically. Tiny. Tiny, mm-hmm. which would be perfect. Yeah. But if, like, his dad is. 6'2", we're done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I hope to see him continue skating for yeah. many, many years. Because this, if you imagine, because he's like 13, 14 yeah. competing this season. He is as young as it gets on the junior ranks. Just imagine what could be in his future if he can just stay, make it through. <laughs> stay healthy and not grow too much mm-hmm. too quickly and not get pumped out of the top Russian spots because you mm-hmm. never know when that'll happen. I mean, at least the men are much more volatile. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he will probably be fine in the men as long as he doesn't grow too fast and yep. his body can handle all the insane stuff he's doing. Exactly. All right, moving on. Yet another tie for nine. Uh, I had Jun Huan Cha's short program number seven on my list. And I had Tomoki Hiwatashi's free skate number seven on my list. So I, Jun Huan Cha, there are a number of guys who I really debated here which program I wanted mm-hmm. to put on. And for me, Jun Huan Cha was one of the top guys where I had a real debate between... <laughs> where he's on the list, but you haven't put in the program yet. Yes, You exactly. know where he is. <laughs> it's one of the two programs, but which one is it going to be? Funnily enough, Tomoki Hiwatashi was one of those for me. <laughs> yes. Um, but this short program to, it's a Piazzolla medley, yeah. which you see and you think, uh, really, but yes. it's not the normal selections no. of music that you anticipate. And it's just for him as well, a new look, a more mature yeah. look. Cause he's another really young guy who is, you know, I, I loved his programs last season, but yeah. they were a bit more junior, you know, Romeo and Juliet and Cinderella are, it makes yeah. you think, it makes you think he's junior. young. Yeah, whereas these are a big leap up in maturity. Yeah. This is I am a senior guy, take me seriously programs. Yeah, and I think it's it's really, really well choreographed. Another yeah. David Wilson joint, he's also on this list a good amount. <laughs> there are certain choreographers that... There are choreographers I knew I loved. Mm-hmm. There are choreographers that I am learning that I love. Mm-hmm. That's the other way to look at this list is yeah. to look at the choreographers that we're talking <laughs> about and look at other stuff they've choreographed mm-hmm. because, I mean, David Wilson is a figure skating staple. Yeah. But there are certain skaters that, again, like Benoit Richaud, 
who just have the right style to carry off his choreography exceptionally well. Yeah, not every choreographer is right for every skater, but if you find that matchup, it it's just so Which, great to see. The fact that Jun Huan Cha has figured out his choreographer pair yep. already makes <laughs> me so happy. He works with David Wilson and Shaylin Bourne every year. Yep. The programs are always great. Mm-hmm. Don't change that. Yeah, exactly. And shout out to that step sequence which is the best part of the program even when the jumps don't go well and the start of a season that the jumps were not going so well unfortunately you can always just enjoy the step sequence black out everything else just watch the step sequence that alone gets it onto the list yeah because the the rest of the program when he skated it well was excellent Mm -hmm. he did not skate it super well very often yeah this is all about the potential. Just, yeah. you know, have a long, nice long blink when the jumps are happening and then yeah. open your eyes for the rest and you'll enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> Close your eyes after he picks and starts to take off. Count to three and then open your eyes again. He's yep. probably back on his feet. <laughs> <laughs> and as we mentioned, that was tied with Tomoki Hiwatashi's free skate. And he as well had a great set of programs I, this season. He... He always has great programs yeah. because he's another skater where the possibilities are endless. Yeah. The flexibility, the flexibility on this guy. The quality of turns, the commitment to performance yeah. is something you don't see very often in a guy this age. Well, that's the thing. He is so young. And and right in prime teenage, I'm too cool for this yes. year's. And he is not in that phase of his life at all. He That's is... maybe the best thing about this yeah. free skate for me it, to Petrushka, which A plus music choice. Absolutely. Choreographed by Tom Dixon. And Tom Dixon must have just had a field day uh-huh. with Tomoki Hiwatashi because he just goes, can you do this? And the, and answer, the answer is, is yeah, sure. always yes. The cantilever into the jumps. The split jumps that put literally everybody else to shame. Including Jason Brown. Sorry, yeah. Jason, but it's true. <laughs> Tomoki gets the same height, and he's shorter than you, and his legs go past 180. Yeah, like well past 180. It's ridiculous. It's, yeah. This this kid is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. He's one of my favorite skaters. <laughs> In large part because he can do all these things, and you can tell that his personality is can you do this? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And well, and that's the thing that he's wearing, like, let's face it, a little bit of a ridiculous costume. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. There's some real over the top choreography, yep. but he commits and you could very mm-hmm. easily see a version of this with somebody else who is not committing to those bits of choreography and it just would not work at all. Yeah. I mean, even if we take out the things that I have never seen anybody but Tomoki Hiwatashi even try. Mm hmm. Take out all of that and assume that it's choreography that literally anybody else could do. Very few skaters are going to put in this level of commitment to the ridiculous dumb stuff that he does in this (laughs) program, which is necessary for the storytelling and for selling the program, but just looks awful if you don't commit. Yeah, this is a program that requires full commitment, and he he does, and Mm -hmm. I think that's helped by... This season, his free skate normally went better jump-wise, which yeah. really helps with the commitment. Absolutely. But, but even at the times when it wasn't, he... He doesn't care. He commits to the choreography. Yeah. He... Yes, ands yep. everything that you tell him to do. And I really admire that in him as a skater. Yep. And especially in the way that it comes out on the ice, because mm-hmm. even when the jumps don't go well, I don't care. Yeah. You can still enjoy it. I don't care. Who cares about jumps? Jumps are overrated. (laughs) Well, and we're going to continue talking about Tomoki Hiwatashi because up next on the list, tied for seventh, I had his short program, number six on my list. And I had Kazuki Tomono's short program, number six on mine. But we're going to talk about Tomoki some more. Yeah. Tomoki is real great, you guys. Have you been watching Tomoki Hiwatashi? (laughs) Because if not, pause. Go watch both programs and then come back yep. so and, that you understand. And we will be linking, don't you worry, because yeah. this this short program, he did not skate it well very often yeah. this season, which is a real shame. But even when it, he didn't do the jumps well, like you could just see this is such a fun program. Yep. It's to the song Love Runs Out. It's just exuberant and fun. Yep. And, and youthful. Yeah. And again... 
100% commitment no yeah. matter what. <laughs> and again, always the cantilever and the gigantic split jump. Yep. If you can do it, why not? Put it in everything if you can do it. Because yeah. again, nobody can do a split jump like Tomoki Hiwatashi. This is a funny theme, but if you've listened to enough of these, I'm <laughs> sure you've noticed that every time we do these lists, we talk about the people who can do the field moves because yep. field moves are so great and they don't get enough practice, frankly, yeah. from most skaters. Because, and this is the thing that apparently is coming up in the ISU Congress that has been postponed. But when the ISU Congress happens, they are apparently talking about changing the scale of values Mm -hmm. for the choreographic elements. And I am so happy Mm -hmm. because the choreographic sequence needs to be worth more so that A, skaters like Tomoki Hiwatashi can benefit, and B, so that skaters try and get more inventive. Well, and that's the thing. Like, again, we talk about that crazy split jump. Like, It's difficult, don't get me wrong, to do that split jump. But if you can do even a split jump that's not as big or, you know, as much of a stretch, it's a wow moment for an audience. And, you know, in terms of like your energy, it's not that hard. You don't have to put that much energy into doing like a split jump or a spiral or a nice long Ina Bauer. It's a little touch that's easy compared to some other things that more people should take advantage of. But you do have to put in the practice time. Yes. Because... At this level, if you do it at a me- mediocre level, yeah, then it, it's... it doesn't work and it hurts you more than it helps. Yeah. So you have to put in the time to become more flexible, to develop the weird muscle strength because mm-hmm. the muscles that you need to strengthen for these things are muscles you don't know exist yeah. yet uh-huh. until you try to do them. And so it does take real effort in training. And if there's no real reward for it, why would you put in all that time? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which is why update the scale of values to make choreographic (laughs) elements more valuable so that we see more Tomoki Hiwatashis in five years. Exactly. Yeah. But we've gushed about him a lot. This short program is also really excellent. Again, he didn't skate it jump wise as well as often, but there were a few, you know, like at uh, US nationals and things and just seek it out. It's just yep. so much fun. And we didn't shout out the choreographer yet, mm, Mark yes. Pillay, mm-hmm. another fantastic choreographer who does amazing work. And I mean, it's not that hard to do amazing work when mm-hmm. your skater can do anything yeah. you want them to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of amazing choreography. Mm-hmm. Yes, this is this, the, the choreographic tie. <laughs> yeah, this is really the choreographic short program tie because Kazuki Tomono's short program to Chroma, the hardest button to button choreographed by philip mills and i'm going to say that like seven times while we talk (laughs) about it because i am obsessed yeah this was one i came real close to putting on my list it's it's out there in terms of music choice and choreography this is another one where if you don't commit it will just fall so flat does not work so if you are not familiar with the story behind this program because there is a story it is based on a modern ballet to the music chroma and he actually he and philip mills have taken some of the original choreography from the first production of this ballet Mm -hmm. and put it into the program on the ice and transformed it so that it works on skates yep it is so cool and weird and everything i want out of a modern ballet program that's the thing i sometimes people will skate you know like a modern dance inspired program but like this this is the ideal of this what you want for modern, a modern ballet dance. yeah on ice mm-hmm. it's not a f- skating program to that music mm-hmm. about modern dance exactly it, no we're, we're bringing the modern dance on the ice and it's it's divisive i know some people who really hate especially those moments of choreography but but If you have any degree of appreciation for modern ballet and a weird ballet, when I link to this, I'm going to try to remember to link a video to the actual ballet, Mm -hmm. to this selection of music so you can understand what they were pulling from, because it is so cool and weird. And you guys know we like weird. Yep. If you don't like weird, this program might not be for you, (laughs) but... He just commits so hard to everything. It's so good, guys. It's It's, so good. It's revelatory in that way where you see something that you've never seen before. And that is frankly rare in figure skating. I gasped the first time I saw it Mm -hmm. because it is just not anything I expected. Yeah. 
like you can skate to the hardest button to button which is weird music (laughs) but that doesn't mean that your program is necessarily going to be special yep and this program is so special guys yeah it's so special and again it it takes a certain type of skater to pull it off not Uh everybody could so kudos to both of them for just (laughs) saying yeah we're gonna do this we're gonna do this and if i'm gonna do this program i'm going to commit Every yep. time, 100%, because it works. Yep. And not enough people do that. <laughs> so that's the end of our tie half of the list. We, yeah. Our top six are actually stratified. No more ties from here on out. We still have one more, or, or, sorry, two more. Yeah. That we didn't agree on. We didn't on. agree on. Although, again, most of the ones that we disagree on were on each other's yeah. runner-up list. Yep. This is not to say that we we just conveniently... There's too many choices. <laughs> we conveniently picked different choices yep. to extend the list so we could talk about more people. <laughs> exactly. Unintentionally. So sixth place was KG Tanaka's short program, which I had number five on my list. This, I still remember seeing it the first time yep. at US International Classic, where he comes out in the ridiculous <laughs> shirt, like weird 70s yep. paisley skating to hip hip chin chin with the hip sways and thinking who is this skater i've never seen him before Where? I, meaning obviously i know who yeah. T- keiji tanaka is but he looks like a different skater he keiji has been very serious serious and not a big performer up to this point mm-hmm. like even when he's skating a serious dramatic program it's very internal mm-hmm. so watching him with full abandon yep. shake his hips for the judges <laughs> It's just I, fun. It's, it's just so fun. much fun. I love the character that Hip Hip Chin Chin pulls out of skaters. Yeah. Most skaters, if they're going to skate to Hip Hip Chin Chin, especially at this point, so many people have done it well. Mm-hmm. They don't pick it unless they are ready. Yeah. And again, shout out to Massimo Scali <laughs> choreographing another great program. So great. It, And I think the biggest thing for me is... Well, and for a lot of the programs on this list, it just felt revelatory of, mm-hmm. oh, there's another side to this skater yep. that I've never really... To be fair, he's had moments where, like, in the William Tell program, yeah. you know, where it, it it's he the has end fun of the moments. Program. Yeah. So he's tired, but you can see that he's trying to have fun. Yeah. They figured out how to let KG have fun. Yeah. And I think the short program is a perfect spot Absolutely. for it. Absolutely. And kind of... You know, think about performing rather than about mm-hmm. your quad sal. That's probably the better strategy anyway. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, this honestly oh. is just so far up because it was just fun and good to see a new side of somebody yeah. where, you know, I thought I knew what a KG Tanaka program was and this season changed that. Frankly, yeah. even in the free skate as well with the Sherlock Holmes, mm-hmm. it's not quite as over the top, but he's pushing a new and interesting direction. He's pushing the performer out of himself which is new Mm -hmm. speaking of skaters who (laughs) are new this season yep camden pulkinen was number three on my list for his short program yeah i this was a hard one not to put on my list i really really debated i it had to be on my list in of course because the program is so great and we are going to talk about that in a second but because junior camden is gone yes that also helps a lot that is why this program is number three (laughs) because he finally did the thing i've always wanted him to do that Mm -hmm. junior camden could not quite handle (laughs) but senior camden can and this caruso program choreographed by josh ferris i was about to say this is also kind of the perfect culmination of so if you didn't know Josh Ferris, the long lamented retired amazing US skater who had like one peak season a few yeah. years ago and then had to retire had some unfortunately. Struggles. But he, great choreographer and great skater, choreographing a program for Camden Polkinen, mm-hmm. another young American guy with great potential, artist in the making, as a tribute to Dennis Ten, who this was one of his best programs. Yep. It's just Everything I love. Exactly. I love this program so much. And I love when Camden does his short program because there are less jumps, less places for things (laughs) to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And he skated the short program very well for most of the season. Mm -hmm. And 
it gave him the chance to really flourish into the performer we all knew was there yep. and we saw when things were going well. But like I said, Junior Camden is dead. Yep. Long live Senior Camden. Long live Senior Camden. And I cannot wait to see what other amazing emotional programs he's going to come up with. And mm-hmm. I want him to continue to work with Josh Ferris because... More yeah. Josh Ferris just in general, yes. please. I would love more than anything. And also because Camden is Josh Ferris 2.0. Yes. Hence why we love him so much. <laughs> Again, if you... God, I don't even remember what season it was. But whatever we're, season it was where yeah. you had the... Where Josh Ferris had the Schindler's List program uh-huh. and the um, Ed Sheeran short program. Like, just go find them and watch them. They're so great. Josh Ferris is amazing. And he is an amazing choreographer. Mm-hmm. And his style is Camden's style, yeah. which is why this works so perfectly. I love it. It's great. Yep. It's so great. What a way to start his senior career and leave the junior career in the dust. Yep, exactly. Uh, fourth place, we finally begin programs <laughs> we agreed on. Fourth place is Yuma Kagiyama's Free Skate, which I had fourth on my list. And I had fifth. This... This is just, again, the theme of this year, I guess, probably due to things happening in the outside world, but fun programs yep. really making a showing. And this free skate is like the definition of a fun free skate. Oh, it's so much fun. It's, again, perfectly youthful yep. for him. And I mean, look at the and way he skated it. I was about to say, he is just such a great skater, like yep. the basic skating quality. And to be fair, most of the time, the jumps as well mm-hmm. just look easy and flowy. And he, he had some rough skates of this yeah. free skate. It wasn't always perfect, but more often than not, you can just relax watching it and yep. enjoy, you know, the potential because he is also so young. Yep. He's a young guy. He, he is full of potential Mm -hmm. and also full of youthful energy yeah which which you need for this kind of a program it's to the tucker soundtrack and and it's music i wasn't really very familiar with but it's just fun and lighthearted, and it feels youthful but not really childish yes and i think that is in terms of like these programs on this entire list where we talk about youthful programs a lot of these guys who finally figured out these choreographers and these skaters have figured out how to walk that line yep. of feeling youthful and energetic without feeling young Kid-like. Yeah. in air quotes, which is something people used to talk about all the time and it drove me crazy. Because <laughs> so, they are young. <laughs> so many of them are children. Let them be children. Why? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they figured out how to please everybody to let Yuma Kageyama have his fun Mm -hmm. and not have people complain that his program is too young. Well, and the other thing that's kind of amazing too is that he did kind of the mother of all half junior, half senior Uh seasons where he was on the JGP and at the JGP final and also went to four continents and junior worlds and senior Bs and things and the Youth Olympics. Mm -hmm. And I saw this the his program so many many times times. and never got tired of this free skate. And most of them were skated well whether the jumps went well or not exactly he is a fantastic skater Mm -hmm. and somebody to watch out for for his commitment is a nine and a half it is not quite a 10 but not everybody is gonna give you a 10 as much as you want them to well and again he's so young i think he's 15 something like that 15 16 something like that he's he is only barely senior age eligible i am fascinated to see whether he moves up full-time to senior because he he could he did, yeah he didn't win junior world so maybe that's incentive yeah. to stay back but then again he was you know he, on the podium yeah. at senior japanese nationals so and skated so well at four yeah. continents like mm-hmm. it was on the podium yeah. at four continents in a in a really well skated senior men's <laughs> like, event he could move up and i would not be mad at it mm-hmm. but also maybe stay in junior so that you can experiment some more yeah, it's it's hard to say. I don't think there's a bad choice, really. No. But I'm just excited to see what his future could yeah, be. I am so excited. And our last half junior, half senior, but mainly junior skater yeah. on this list. Third place, Andrew Torgashev's short program, which I had number three on my list. <laughs> and I had number four. This, it's just such a great program. I love it so much. And important to say so this is 
Bloodstream is the music. And he consulted with other choreographers, yep. but this is some self choreo, which makes it even better. And here's the thing good self choreo makes the best programs. Yep. The problem is lots of people do bad self choreo. Yeah, and choreography it's a hard job. Yeah. Like it's, there's a reason you pay somebody separately from your coach to do your choreography. Yeah. And I do think it's a good idea for young skaters to experiment with self choreography, yeah. but maybe not rely on it unless you really have sort of a vision and idea of, you know, new moves and movement and elements, which watch that ending step sequence uh-huh. in that short program. And like, I was going to say, you have to have a really strong sense of self yep. doing self choreo, which Andrew Targashev clearly has. Uh-huh. He knows who he is as a skater. Mm-hmm. He knows the story he's telling and he knows what he's capable of. Yep. And I mean, that whirly kick thing uh-huh. that is all his own, which he has in both programs. Plus even just the stomp at the beginning yep. of the step sequence there are so many moments that can't imagine anybody else yeah. doing. Well, and also even when he choreographs his own turn clusters, which mm-hmm. is a thing you have to have in your step sequence. Spoiler, most people do the same like yeah. three clusters. Because you get good at them. And yeah. so why change it? You get good at these small clusters of turns because turn clusters are hard. Yep. Especially at full speed. Mm-hmm. And he is not doing the same ones that everybody else does every season. Yep. He's trying new things and it's working and he's pushing himself in a way that a lot of choreographers wouldn't. Yeah. A lot of choreographers, obviously, the, a lot of the ones on this list mm-hmm. are will, exceptions to that. But... Like your Shailen Bourne, your Mark Pillay, your Philip Mills, mm-hmm. your David Wilson will say, try this. Do this thing. But- or even just, you know, a lot of choreographers, they pick their battles. They're like, yeah. okay, you're comfortable with these turns in the step sequence. Let's leave that and I'll do things outside of the turn clusters that are interesting. Yeah. Because if you do something that's too hard, a lot of skaters either just can't execute it well enough to bother or just will ditch it and do yeah. what's easier. And, and then what's the point of doing the choreography? But and if will you're... guarantee themselves the level. Yeah. But if you're choreographing for yourself, you know what boundaries you can push and what areas to push in and which areas to play a little bit safer. And also these choreographers, with the exception of a few really close relationships, they don't see these skaters more than like three times a year. Mm -hmm. So that choreographer does... Shailen Bourne will come in assuming you're going to work on her step sequence. Yes. But a lot of other choreographers will say, is he really going to do the step sequence often enough to get the level. I guess I should make it easier. I guess I should do the things that Mm -hmm. you expect to do. But if you're choreographing for yourself and you know you really want to do this, you know you're going to put in the work. Yep. And you can see the work put in. Because it's so good. The step sequences in both his programs, and frankly, for all his step sequences ever since I've been watching Mm -hmm. it at least, are great. And I think this is a great piece of music for him. And... He had some rough free skates, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, all season long, but he had some really great performances of this short program. None better than, ironically, at U.S. Nationals, where he was competing as a senior and put in a quad, but still got it done. And it was just such an amazing program. I don't know if we can find video to share because it's blocked everywhere, I'm pretty sure. But But if you have access to that and you Uh have not seen it yet, you need to because that was... Probably the most performative he's been in that step sequence, which is saying something. Yeah. Even, we'll probably link to his short program from Junior Worlds, which was also great, but, you know, doing it with safer tech content Mm -hmm. because he had to, but still exceptionally skated. Yeah. It's still a great performance, but I think the fact that, for me at least, that he showed that, no, he can do this level of commitment to choreography and put a quad in the short program in the high pressure environment of us nationals the potential is all there we just got to figure out those free skates we got to figure out the consistency of the free skate Mm -hmm. because you could see him celebrate during that step sequence Mm -hmm. he was not just performing it he was celebrating that i just did the The thing thing. yeah (laughs) i can't believe it i just did the thing And now I get to do my step sequence that I clearly love yep. and am having so much fun doing. 
you can feel how much he loves this program every time he skates it. Again, the free skate is also excellent. He just never sk- skated it as well, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm hoping with everything I've got that we have a senior Andrew glow up like we had with Camden. Exactly. That, that's all I want. He will have to move up. Yeah. He's had that taste of success. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we can just run in that direction yeah. next season. We need a Camden glow up. I don't know what Camden did, but yeah. Andrew, Go you need to him. copy. <laughs> exactly. Please. <laughs> All right, number two on this list, and I, I think our top two are probably pretty predictable, yeah. but eh. number two, <laughs> Nathan Chen's Rocket Man Free Skate, which we both had number two on our list. <laughs> I mean, how can you not love the Rocket Man program? It's just, it feels like it, this is an exciting program. Mm-hmm. The, the thing I've really appreciated is that every season, Nathan comes out with different ideas yeah he he doesn't feel stuck in a rut in terms of like program theme or music or whatnot and again we talked about it already it's that iconic the dance break and the choreo sequence is not something you're seeing from anybody right now and it's not something we've seen from nathan before at this point and i mean he's another skater who has found the choreographers who can give him what he's good at but also push him yep Shaylin Bourne and Marie-France Dubray. Marie-France yep. Dubray did the free skate mm-hmm. with Sam Schwinard doing some of, some I of assume, the chore- I assume the choreographic sequence that has Sam that Schwinard was, written all over it. That's <laughs> very clearly a Sam Schwinard dance break. Mm-hmm. Like, that was him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it does, Sam Schwinard choreography taken from, from floor to ice does not always work. Yeah. But it works in this program. And it works because of commitment. You cannot yep. not commit to that <laughs> dance break. That... This whole program would be so dorky and lame yes. if you did not commit to it. But Nathan, again, he's he's also in that age range of he could very much be too cool for school right now, and mm-hmm. he is not. Yeah, that's the thing. I appreciate that he is pushing choreographically as well as technically because yeah. obviously, I mean, it helps a lot that he the jumps are just so easy. Yeah. Even at like US Nationals where he wasn't at his best and it still looked like, yeah, that was still pretty easy. He's yeah. not doing the dip- hardest tech content, but it still looks like a walk in a park. <laughs> and even when he's tired after doing all the quads, mm-hmm. we sell that dance break right at the end. With the slide and mm-hmm. he's just having so much fun and he looks so happy to be on the ice. Yep. Another thing I do want to celebrate is the music choice itself. Because mm-hmm. I, I have to say, for me, when I first heard that he was skating to the Rocket Man soundtrack, meaning not El- the El- Elton John originals, uh-huh. but like the soundtrack version, I had a bit of a moment of, eh, I don't know about Are this. Are you sure? We should have known better. Yes, exactly. It's their cover versions and i've i've watched the the movie rocket man mm-hmm. since and you sort of get where these covers come from but they're more sort of sweeping in a lot yeah. of ways they feel really dramatic especially they're very theatrical yeah they're really theatrical and i think really well suited to a skating program uh-huh. which i never would have guessed before I, hearing it if you ever tell me you're skating to a cover of a mm-hmm. song by a well-known like pop artist, artist. yeah I am always going to be skeptical. Every time it's a cover, there is one exception, and that is if you're using a postmodern jukebox <laughs> cover. <laughs> where they're like totally turning yeah, it around. Where it's the lyrics and the general the basic melody, melody but... but it's a completely different song. That's the only exception. If you are doing a straight cover of anything, I am nervous. Yeah. Because they're almost never as good as the original. Well, and that's the thing. I would say that, at least in the selections that he picked, they're not really straight covers. Like, the Yellow Brick Road section is really dramatic and feels big and grand. And then, obviously, again, the dance break at the end with Benny and the Jets. It's it's not like the original. It's making you think of, you know, of Elton John, but it's not really an Elton John program. It's it's just a fascinating choice. I would be so interested to know how they came up with this, other than, I guess, maybe seeing the movie and thinking... Sam Schwinar and Marie-France Dubray probably saw the movie and thought, hmm, <laughs> I wonder. And then, you know, you know you're choreographing for Nathan Chen, and you go, are you willing to commit to this? Yeah, and the fact that the answer was yes is fantastic. A plus. The only slight negative is that yellow shirt i can't with the yellow shirt 
the the, the bus tour bus seat. yeah the bus seat one it's not my favorite but it's fine but I, Honestly, I cannot take the yellow shirt I didn't love it until I found out his mom made it and then I that was helps like a lot that's really endearing how dare you get rid of the shirt your mother <laughs> made you for that yellow monstrosity for the monstrosity that is a rash guard yeah it's too big yeah that's like I I get Vera Wang is a big name and all but I she's not doing good work for him no I she is phoning it in yeah. for Nathan Chen. That is, and admittedly, this is a tiny thing, but when I see your costumes and just think, ugh, that's <laughs> it not a... It ruins it. It It ruins it. He's Nathan Chen, so he yeah. makes up for the bad costuming. But, but you don't need to start off at a disadvantage like that. But it might have been a closer run between first and second. He still would have been second, but it would yeah. have been closer <laughs> if he hadn't had such a bad costume. Yeah. And but, you know. Yeah, we all know what number one is. <laughs> come on. I mean, come on. Obviously, Kevin Amos, uh -huh. the question of you, uh -huh. was there any question that this no, would be number never. one? From day one, when we first saw it at Autumn Classic, mm -hmm. it, it was impossible to beat already. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, if you go back, you'd have to go back a long way, but like our tweets from the moment, like it... Feeling viscerally excited just watching his run through, uh -huh. My, which was no jumps, just choreography. Yeah. He never jumps in his run throughs. Yeah. It should make me more nervous, but I honestly just enjoy it more than anything else yeah. because I because don't have to have worry to... about exactly. him. Exactly. But my heart was beating out of my chest watching him do the run through because I was so excited. Because that's the thing is... It was obviously a question. We obviously yep. loved his programs last season. How could he live up to mm -hmm. or even surpass them? I think he absolutely succeeded. And, you know, picking Prince. It's a bold choice. It is. Uh, not many people can do. pull it off. Well, yes. The, I mean, he's in. We also had a poll of like, who yeah. had the best Prince program? He's in good company with uh -huh. the people who can pull off that vibe because it requires absolute commitment and to the character. Yeah. And confidence in everything. It's such a shame that the last skate of this was the one at Europeans, which was by far in a way the worst skate. That was a disaster. Yeah. We're going the one assuming I can find it when I post this list, the one that is going in the video list will be the one from the Grand Prix final. Yeah. Which I will never forget mm -hmm. because how did he medal at the Grand Prix final? <laughs> I'm thrilled. But... Honestly, and quite frankly, it's, I think, equally his choreography and his commitment to yep. said choreography. Absolutely. Because if he, like, let's face it, if he was just doing the tech content that he was doing yeah. with run-of-the-mill programs, he wouldn't even be at the Grand Prix final. No, he would be completely unremarkable. Mm -hmm. His tech content is not remarkable. Yeah. Perfectly normal. Yep. And then he does these ridiculous slides into his spins. Like, that split into the spin. Uh-huh. I will never Again, be over. The first time we saw him, what? <laughs> He's doing what? I saw him do the split, and I was like, oh, that's that's so Kevin. And then he got up and went straight into a spin, and I went, what? How did you even do that? And that's the thing. It's the perfect melding of, you know, we've got the hits. We've got, you know, the, the aerial at the yep. end of the program. <laughs> And, you know, a few of the, like, certain segments of the step sequence are the same yeah. as before. But then again, you've got the new things like the slide into the spin uh -huh. or some of the transitions into and out of the jumps. Like, he practiced those so, so much. much. Again, it was most of, he did very little jumping at Autumn Classic. He really did. <laughs> Honestly, it's a miracle that he pulls off the jumps as often as he does because at competition, he does not practice them very much. Yeah. He's mostly doing his spins and his choreography. Yeah. And I personally am all here for it. Yep. I could care less about his jumps other than whether they negatively impact the rest of the program. And whether he makes the free skate. But well, yes. we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's fine. It, I think also important to mention that Kevin did not win our overall ranking last season because we each chose yep. separate programs. programs. I do really love his free skate as well, but this, this, this year there was no question. This, this short is, program 
is it's a star vehicle yeah and for me personally best program of the year out of any and all disciplines this was a really tough one for me because <laughs> i did answer that question mm-hmm. for a game that our friend was playing on twitter it ended up being my second favorite that day mm-hmm. but it flip-flops daily with yeah spoiler alert swain hunts free skate yeah <laughs> That's, that's Those the other the excellent two. contender, for sure. Those are the top two programs of the season across all disciplines. Yeah. I am not taking criticism on that. No, I mean, how I don't know how you watch this program and aren't excited by yeah. it. I mean, everybody is seeing what we saw last season mm-hmm. because he can land the jumps most of yes. the time now. <laughs> that's all that's changed. Well, and I do think just choreographically, it's a fantastic piece. The music suits him. And again, who else could get away with skating to Prince? Not so few many people. people. Yeah. And who else can get away with the choreography that he does? Yep. The choreography is bold and innovative. And, and every moment is to the music uh-huh. and all the nuance of detail is paid attention to. He is not putting in less than 100% at Ever. any moment. I mean, think about the times he face planted this season because <laughs> it did happen. Yeah. And he popped right back up and was right back on top of the music doing all of the choreography. Nothing gets cut. Yep. He, aside from that one time, commits to everything, every moment. Yep. And just can't wait to see what he comes up with next. I don't even know what to expect. <sighs> How? I just want to be excited. Oh, I... This is the problem, is if it's anything less than amazing, I'm going to be so disappointed. (laughs) The bar is so astronomically high. (laughs) Because every time he skates to something, the music belongs to him. Yeah. We joke about that, but I... People skate in this shirt, and I think, I wish this was Kevin. Yes. And then I feel guilty, (laughs) but... I Except you shouldn't, because they should have known better than to pick it in the first place, frankly. Yeah, and... (laughs) If anybody is ever bold enough to skate to question of you, I'm going to think this should be Kevin. Well, and that's the thing is before this, it was Jason Brown. And that's that's still a great program, uh-huh. but this has supplanted it. Yeah, this this music belongs to Kevin now. Yeah. I would really, skaters, do not skate to anything that Kevin has skated to these last two seasons for yeah, at would, least five, ten years. Yeah, would not recommend don't do it. Really wouldn't. You you just don't want that comparison. No, you don't want me to be thinking, but this is where the split goes. <laughs> You're supposed to do the splits into your spin here. Yep. Remember the side aerial and remember that step sequence. And like, all the one foot skating. Yeah. If, you, you just don't want that. If you can't do better choreography than him, which if you can, where are you? Yes. <laughs> if you can, desperately want to see it. But yeah. if you can't, just don't, don't bother. Don't. Don't. <laughs> I do not want to have to think, I wish this was Kevin watching you. Exactly. Don't make me think that anybody ever. <laughs> don't. But yes, <sighs> I, again, a predictable end, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, I stand by it. I, so often I think, did I put my skaters in the right order? Mm-hmm. When it comes to Kevin, I never question it. Yeah, no. It, it's number one and has been since the moment we saw yeah. him doing it and run through. <laughs> From the second the music started, yeah, yeah. we knew that this was going to be the best program of the season and nobody was going to be able to beat it. And yeah. we were right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so good job us, I guess. I guess. <laughs> or maybe we're just that predictable. I don't know. <laughs> Both. All righty. So I think that wraps us up for this particular episode. Again, we'll be back in about two weeks with another best of list and in, in the off weeks you can find us on patreon for other yeah. right now tessa virtue and scott meyer content oh get ready mm-hmm. i've watched the first episode of the reality tv <laughs> show guys get it's ready. Terrible. It's terrible it is bad. really terrible it's so bad get ready <laughs> get ready it's only a dollar per episode yeah. so join us over on patreon exactly all right so let's wrap this one up thank you everybody for listening and thanks as well to our sponsor inskate uh, check out the link in the description of this episode to see what they're all about and get started with their app uh, please let us know your thoughts about this weekend figure skating at flutz's cast at gmail.com you can also follow us at flutz's cast on facebook twitter and instagram for even more skating content don't forget to check out our patreon patreon.com slash flutz's cast for all that bonus content and our merch store, fletzescast.redbubble.com. 
And if you like what we do, consider leaving us a review wherever you're listening. We'll be back in about two weeks with the rest of our season's best lists, but until then, keep a watchful eye out for those Flutzes and Waxel skating fans.